Mark and Jada here. You are tuning into the God Bull Life Podcast, where anything goes because love covers all. God uses marriage to grow us and accomplish his will. He's got plans for your marriage, too. Welcome to the God Bull Life Podcast. This is Mark. And Jade. And this is the God Bull Life Podcast. Previously on the God Bull Life Podcast. When you keep it in here mm-hmm. and don't say it out of here, mm-hmm. the enemy can trick you with your own thoughts. And then you start helping the enemy by getting creative with the thoughts. With the thought. You think that, you know, the enemy keeps ta- attacking me. No, he dropped one nugget and you done nurtured that nugget for 10 years. I ask that because the biggest difference that I see in our marriage year two mm-hmm. over year one, mm-hmm. I feel like the first year of marriage, you're still feeling each other out. You're still like, okay, we married now. We got the ring on. Yeah. We sharing things and all that. And it's still, especially if you're not living with the person, yeah. like, it's still, you know, kind of fresh. We see marriage as forever. Mm-hmm. And because we do, the transparency is on another level. Yeah. And so we've just continued to get more and more naked with each other, even to the point that like, I was talking to one of my, um, one of my, my friends, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point to where I'll come home and tell my wife, like, babe, like, this woman is at the mall, this, the small dress on, it's in my head, and I'm just, you know, getting this out. And that was like, wow. They've been married now for 15 years. But it's like, I'm like, wow, that, that's incredible. Because that would help it get out. Yeah. And, and, and free me. Yeah. Versus it being this thing that I'm playing back in my head in guilt of like, oh, why do I feel that? What's going on? Right. Like, Right. Like, did I cheat? Was it? Right. <laughs> I lust like, in my did mind. I lust and in now my I'm mind. Like, God, can get that on me, please. Jesus, right. take it, please. But <laughs> when when did you feel like you could be naked? I'll ask that question first. When did I feel that? Um Or hold on, rewind. What? Do you feel like you could be naked? Yeah. I think I think you're spot on. I think with just the timeline and like where we are, I think that I think through therapy, um, breaking down some things within me that I didn't realize were there. Um, and, you know, uncovering my own, you know, trauma um, and realizing that I had been carrying a lot of things for so long that they just became part of like who I thought I was. And so when you started being transparent and you started sharing more and really, and I could tell that you were really putting it out there, it gave me the courage to be like, okay, like, this is what we doing. (laughs) This is what we doing. And, you know, like all the, all the work we've been doing, the, the devotion time, the watching messages together, the, you know, marriage counseling we did, like, and honestly, truth be told, I, it didn't even click for me after having those all those sessions together. It wasn't until I did my personal work that I started feeling like, okay, I I have to be honest because I wasn't even being honest with myself. That's the start. <laughs> That's the yeah. start. As my pops would say, do you lie? To yourself about your when you buy yourself. Right. Do you, you lie, lie to yourself, yourself when, when you, you buy, buy yourself? yourself? Because if you do, <laughs> you ain't telling the truth to nobody else. Nope. <laughs> like no. Nope. And God already knows. God so you already knows. Yourself. So you think you're trying to <laughs> hide like, something? I was there, but, fool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. But no. But you know what I was thinking about the other day, though. Uh, specifically speaking to that that concept of like, do you lie to yourself when you're by yourself? I remember a time and I can't pinpoint exactly when this was, but there was like a season and it might've been around between like 2017 and 2019. I don't know. Somewhere in that time where Oregon, Oregon, (laughs) when we lived in Oregon, (laughs) there would be moments where 
I would look myself in the mirror and not recognize myself. And I'm talking about like, I'm editing hours and hours of my own content. I'm listening Playback. to my voice <laughs> for over. hours because I, at this point I've been creating content for 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if anybody gonna know themselves, know by face, know by voice, know by, it'd be me. And can revisit. And can we, you know what I mean? And, but when I got to a place where I really was like, I have no idea who I am. I know I'm like lipstick and curls and I know I'm Jade, but like I was putting all my eggs in the lipstick and curls basket for years. So when you started like breaking things down and opening up and stuff, it actually highlighted for me how not transparent I was being with myself and how I was not actually addressing those things that I had blacked out because they had been blacked out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just do 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 working, working, getting great things happening, doing my thing. And then there would be literally days where I would walk in front of a mirror and I'd be like, the voice in my head doesn't match who I see. Why is that? And then I started taking inventory. I'm like, it's not just my voice. There's like other voices in my head that are familiar, but I can tell that they're not me. So like, what are these voices? And so that took me a while to start like recognizing like how God speaks to me versus how like evil spirits speak to me, how my anxiety sounds, what that depression, depression, depression voice sounds like. They have a voice. They have a tone. Like, you know them. But if you don't take the time to pause and really sit in yourself and really, like, look in the mirror and act, like, if, you, if, it, if it's uncomfortable to look yourself in the mirror, you already know what it is. Because... You are at a point, at that point, where you ain't even, <laughs> you forfeited your choices. Because now, the spirits are running you. And so some days you feel great, some days you feel terrible. And you're like, why do I always feel so up and down? Because sometimes it's you, and sometimes it's not, in a real way. And... What I realize now that we've been doing inner work on both sides is that God's voice is soft and gentle and always good. Always good. So, but also gentle and usually soft and quiet. So you got to be quiet to even hear him. Like quiet your mind. Watch your body quiet. Quiet everything. your, like everything. Sit down. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> My God, our whole generation needs to sit down somewhere. Whole sit. generation on Adderall, <laughs> everybody. Sit down somewhere. Pause. Stop. <laughs> Stop drinking instead of dealing with yourself. And listen, we y'all, we have wine right here. We not talking about you can't ever and you can, but you got to know, is that helping me? Is that keeping me close to where God wants me to be? Or is that continuing to push me farther from Christ? Because in certain seasons, I, I couldn't just, I couldn't just have one drink. I needed at least three plus. Now, we're not saying nothing wrong with drinking. Nothing wrong with drinking, but hey, understand where you're at. Hey, there's a script in, is it Matthew? Jesus was like, um, man, don't drink, don't do nothing, and y'all call him, uh, he's isolated, don't drink, 
Speaking of John the Baptist, y'all call him a, what do they call him? I don't know. Something Some, like a crazy person. A cra- yeah. Something. Son of man comes and drinks with you. Jesus said he drank. <laughs> it's in the Bible. And drinks with you, and you call him a devil. Yeah. Basically showing how, like, you can't please, please people. Yeah, yeah. You can't. I was just putting it out there. We ain't, talking, we ain't saying drinking bad. No. We drink wine. We Jesus drink. drank wine. Yeah. Jesus first recorded yeah. miracle was turning water into wine. Yeah. So, yeah. But we, there, is, there we were it. seasons where that wasn't good for yeah. us, for me particularly. For me too. You know, and it's important. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have paused and really taken inventory of, like, what is actually happening? Why can't I stop myself? Why do I feel like I've got to consume a lot of alcohol to feel like in a good mood? It's one thing to casually have a glass of wine here or there and still be in your right mind, still be the same person. But if drinking makes you a different person, you, you, need, a, you need to take inventory. Like you need to, and that's the part that we don't like. We don't like self-discipline. At all. We don't like, you we know. We don't like rule structure. We don't like rule structure, structure, nothing. But this is the thing. Maturity requires it. Because too much of anything is not good. Except God. God is always good. Lots of God is always going to be good. But anything physical in this earth, like, you have to understand that there's balance and sometimes hey, like hearing this talk from you right now is like <laughs> yeah 25 year old jay was not talking like this let me tell y'all listen 25 year old hey, jay would have been wasn't talking like this this Ooh. is i'm i'm over here <laughs> getting you know what i'm saying goosebumps and stuff like like this is this is wow yeah like god really saw this then yeah yeah the enemy saw this then <laughs> right, which is even more reason why, like, we got attacked. And we be getting attacked from left and right, y'all. Like, we be getting attacked in ways that <laughs> the devil is really crafty, truly. Because, like, to your point earlier when you were like, you know, getting saved is just the beginning. Like, it's a continuous process of just trying to learn who God is you know, what God wants you to do. And you say by Jesus, like, it's, you know, a, it's, it's a, a process. And you're not going to be, it, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to get saved. And then five years from getting saved, you're going to be great. This person that's told you, you could be, you may, not, and some days you may be like perfect. And then other days you may be crazy because we're you humans. St- you still in there. You still in there. You. Holy Spirit is too. But right. you still in there too. Right. You still have to choose yes. because it's not, it's not love if yes. there's no choice. So you still have to choose Oh, to that's another thing. Okay, work. speaking of choice, that's another indicator of how I knew I had a lot of work to do was when we would be like arguing about stuff or I'd get mad about stuff, I genuinely felt like I had no choice but to get mad. I felt like, well, you said, how do you expect me not to feel a type of way? How right. do you expect this me is not the behavior to? that has to follow this yeah. because that's what I've been taught. Yeah. Somebody showed me that. Yeah. That, and oh, that's, you don't let that slide. You got to. Right. Well, no, I don't. And actually. then it's like, <laughs> you really don't. Self-control. Like, you really have a point. The like, you really have a choice. And that's what I meant by, you know, when you don't pause and quiet down and connect with God and really talk to him and understand who he says you are, you forfeit your choice because you're going to be used. Whether you know who's using you or not, and if you know that you're not being used by God specifically, you're being being used by something something else. You're being used by something. And that's the part (laughs) that people have trouble with because, like, it's like, oh, well, I'm a good person and I do good things. And I, used I'm like, to, I used to play that card. I'm like, well, I'm not a jerk. Right. And normally that comment is even comparing yourself to somebody else. I compare right. it to that. Compare it right. to what this person is or what yeah. these people are like. Yeah. I'm not that as if that makes you better. Yeah. We rank sin. We rank. Right. And it's like, nah, God sees it one way. Like, there's no gray area with God. Yeah. Like, in anything. There's no gray area. But the thing is, when you 
agree with God and you say, okay, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm tired of doing this by myself. Mm -hmm. Please help me take over whatever you say I'm going to do. You know, then it's like you have to be ready for the tension. You have to be ready to like meet yourself where you're really at. Wherever that is. Wherever that is. Because God is going to show you in his word where he wants you to be, right? And for me, when I started seeing things in the word, I was like, oh, I am so not these things. <laughs> I am so not. My attitude and the way I pop off when I'm mad and, and the way I do not care about some people and the way that I could care less uh, if I never, you know, like the way I would throw people away, you know. God is going to grace you in that. Like, you give God your full yes. He don't expect you to be 100% clean, holy, white as snow tomorrow. He going to walk with you. Mm -hmm. He's going to transform you. The renewing of your mind. But it's a process. And usually, that's that, at least for me, Nobody told me that. So I'm thinking, oh, well, yeah, I'm we're just going to get, you know. And then when God really started convicting me of things in me, because I was doing that, too. I was like, well, I'm not as bad as I'm not as. And that's the hardest thing to break because mm -hmm. you really think you good. Like you really think. And we all feel like, it's like, no. you know, like at <laughs> least I ain't over there doing what they doing. But you nah. got your stuff, too. We all do. We all do. If we living and breathing on this planet right now, we got stuff. We have sinful nature. We have sinful nature. So it's not about, you know, being saved, changing your life and then acting holier than thou. It's about saying, my God, how I've been delivered. It's, it's, like, it's, it's literally giving up. Yeah. God, I've tried it my way and I just keep getting worse. Yeah. And when when you totally give it to him in honesty, giving the location of where you are, here I am, God, right here. In addicted to pornography, heart just confused because of a ton of adolescent trauma. Mm -hmm. Unsure of myself because I'm in a profession that I feel like I need a degree for, but I don't have it. So I'm feeling less than even though I'm great. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what a husband or a man of the house is supposed to be or feel like or act like or talk like. Here I am. Mm -hmm. And God took that. And it's still working, but... Here we are, and, and he's done enough to where if he, literally, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if he does nothing else, mm -hmm. there's generational curses broken in my family. Period, they're done. Like, gone. So, we've done life's work right here. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit has just been speaking. And he said, we just getting started. You did? We are just getting started. Yeah. Like, God, God didn't heal us for us to shut up. No. God didn't heal us no. for us to sit in the back with our blessing and act like we, we brand new to others. Right. Like, we're new creatures, but we're new to be put back out there right. to go get more. Yeah. We're doing this to get more of you. We're doing yeah. this to show you, hey, you can... Follow Christ and still be a vibe, your mm -hmm. vibe, the vibe God gave you naturally. Yeah. Like you can, you can still be hella fly and talk about how great the love of Jesus Christ is. Yeah. Like, because that's the only way I can do this. That's the only Period. way we can do it. That's, that, that's the, y'all just heard, y'all didn't heard through this podcast 
just me alone, y'all done heard about my addiction to pornography. I had a baby when I was 19 years old. Um, I've had an abortion before. I, I've, um, I've been sexually abused. I've been verbally abused. Uh, I like, do I keep going? I'm a, I'm a college dropout. Uh, what else I like snitch on? My, I've had babies out of wedlock. <laughs> yeah. I got a baby. I'm like, I, I can, and, but God. But God. But. Whenever you see the but God in there somewhere, like, you're like, you read a bad story, and it's like, but God. It's like, yeah, this is about to turn around. Right. It has like those two words changes things. That's why we're here. I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> Like, but God. Because, like, hearing you name that just now, Hearing me name that, that's the first time I've ever named that before, by the way. Like, first time I've in one sentence? In one sentence, that's the first time I've, yeah. And that's, that, that's wild. Like, insane. To <sighs> say the least. Like, wow. Like that, track, like, that track record? Are you doing what? With who? God using you how? Because the world say, I'm, I'm damaged goods. <sighs> Nothing good can come from that. Look at those experiences. Right. Like, nobody's going to want you. Mm. Like, what? Nobody can use you. But do you see how he's saying these phrases? Those aren't you. Those were never you. But those are the voices in your head. Those are the spirits using you. Because the enemy knows what God has for you. Enemy knows that you already won. We already won. Fighting from, from, from victory, not for victory. From victory. Fighting from victory. We ain't Fighting going towards victory. something we ain't got already. Huh? What's yours is yours. Like, that's why the, the idea of like, what's, what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours. Like, nobody can ever take that away from you. No, not nobody can take it away from you. Nothing. Nothing can take away what's yours. Nothing except your own self, not fulfilling your purpose, getting caught up trying to look at people and try to meet people's expectations. And you end up wasting years and years and years working jobs that you only need because you want a certain type of house. And you want to be able to have not just one car, not two cars, but you want three or four cars. But you are behind closed doors. A mess. Like, look at your personal relationships. Take inventory. There are there more people leaving you than joining you in life? Do you have more issues from a relational place? but you're just going, doing awesome at your job, do you think all God wants you to do on this planet is work a job or your career and make millions of dollars? Like, let's just say that. You got a job that, or career that you are making millions, but you have no one to share it with, and you can't even really receive love because your heart is so hardened because you've chosen to hold on to the shame, hold on to the guilt, it's never let too. go of it's the heavy. things that you've been it's through. It's heavy. It ain't even light. It's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> like, it's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you wonder why, like, you're depressed. You want, like, that's the enemy's playground. Oh, you feeling a little, all right, bet. I'm going a, I'm to a send some of my little minions over to you. He can't stop you. He'll push you. He'll push you. He'll delay you. He'll steal your joy. He'll try to destroy your purpose. But the thing is, he can't destroy anything without vessels. So you have to recognize that even the man that assaulted you, he's still God's child. There's still some God in him. And also, there's some spirits in him, or were in him. I don't know where he's at in his life. 
that they were the ones doing that. The enemy is the one that was doing that, operating in that man. So you got to separate who people are from what people do. Love the person. Hate the thing they do. Love the person. And the reality is love is enough. Yeah. I mean, if we start and end with love, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we go too far. Yeah. Sometimes we, we try wanna, to do too much. Yeah, we want to. And it's like now nah, God created love to be the, the <laughs> I want to create a, a fire custom deck of cards where the Joker is a love card. Yeah. Because, you know, space, big joke. Like, yeah. It win every time. Win every time. Win With every love, time. you like win love is, every single time. We should think about, like, what, what kind of love did Jesus show Paul to take him from killing Christians to writing most of the New Testament? What type of love was that? Like, if we want to really see change, <sighs> oh, man. love on somebody. Yeah. Love on an enemy. Shock them with how much you can love on them. Love Killing on that them person. with kindness like, is not just a phrase. That is literally I'm telling you, when real. I told that man I love him, it was via text, but I know. He was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? And even, babe, even, I mean, not to like go back into this too much, but I have to. Yeah, we ain't. What? I have to <laughs> like comment about this. Like when we, when you told your mom. Mm, that was crazy. That that was crazy. Y'all. That was crazy. As a mom, experiencing her hear her son tell her something like that. <laughs> I could cry right now. Because that is something no parent ever wants to hear. And if you are a parent... And have gone through some of the things that Mark has talked about. Kill that thing before it attaches itself to you. I mean, to your kids. Before you end up finding out 15, 20 years after the fact. That something like that happened. And in, in a perfect world, we'd be able to know and be able to prevent. But the thing is. As parents, we're not always there. We don't see everything. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. Our children are gods. We have to trust that when they go off into the world that like they're going to be safe. But even with that being said, things will still happen. But we have to expose these things. We have to talk to our kids at a very young age about what appropriate touching means. That it's okay to tell somebody you don't want to give them a hug. Word. It's okay to say, I don't want to give you a kiss. You have that right even as a five-year-old. You have that right as a child. Because if we try to pretend like these things do not happen. Then they continue to they happen. They continue to happen. <laughs> the devil works in the dark. So if it stays dark, that's where he at. <laughs> want to get him out? Shine that light. Listen. I speak a boo. I see. And, you're, and, and, and the thing is, yes, it feels like we're doing the hard labor of it. What? Like of breaking the curses. Oh. Like, well, yeah. You but, know, like. But it's necessary. Look. It's necessary. When you get tired, when you get really tired, when you. I remember, like, when God, we were driving the car and God said, tell her today. I was like, what? Yeah. It wasn't even planned. It was oh. like a, we going to somebody's birthday party. Yeah. It was like, tell her today. <laughs> was that you got? I, had to, I actually asked her, to come on, make sure that I ain't crazy, babe. And she was like, I feel it too. I was like, dang. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was hoping you said, nah, this ain't time. Yeah. Place. No. Man. Yeah. And that's how you got to, if you're married, you got to both be tapped in. Be naked. Get naked. Yeah. If I wasn't trying to, I, I, I had to be, uh, babe, this is, where I, this is where I am. Yeah. And I'm still working on this because there are times when I don't want to be naked. Mm -hmm. When I'm like, oh, I know. babe, she, I mean, God, she might judge me. Mm -hmm. so do I want to put myself out there? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, <laughs> because the enemy don't want you to talk. Right. And when we do, that happened. The conversation was hard but necessary. And the, the generational curse was broken. Yeah. And with all of the stuff that y'all have heard us talk about this whole season, um, we ended this way because it's the ultimate level of transparency to, to show, hey, but God. Nothing all Mark did was, was participate. That's it. Yeah. The outcome, the, the, the courage, the boldness, all that came from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can do it too. Let's pray. But God. But God. You in a prayer? Yeah. Okay, come on. Lord. We feel your presence in the room. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for my husband. Thank you for putting your spirit of truth in him, your spirit of courage in him, your spirit of gentleness in him, God. Because if anybody knows how to beat ourselves up the most, it is ourselves. God, we know sometimes it ain't the enemy keeping us from what you want us to do. It's our own selves. It's our own belief in lies that we're not worth it. But God, you called us good. You call us worth it. And we can never be perfect like your son. So Lord, Thank you for not expecting us to be. Lord, thank you that perfection is not the goal. The goal is participation with you to allow you to live in us, to be able to spread around the world through your willing servants. People that just decide to be used by you, that make a choice to say, I'm claimed for. My body is only to be used by God. Any spirit that is not God cannot take residence in my body. Any spirit that is not God cannot take residence in my mind. And Lord, Continue to help us keep our sane minds. Lord, your spirit of self-control, it's one that we have honestly prayed for so much. And with your peace, we are able to have self-control. We are able to look ourselves in the mirror and actually speak truth to ourselves in moments when we feel those voices come up that try to tell us lies, that try to get us off track. And even when we've drifted far off track, you are always there, ready to embrace us wherever we are. We try to act like you don't know our deepest, darkest, nastiest, ugliest secrets. But the truth is you do. You already know us. You know us before we were in our mother's womb. You had plans for us to prosper us, to bless us. And so God, everyone that is hearing my voice, watching this show, I pray that you put a hunger in their hearts for you. Show them in a real way, whatever it takes, because you are a specific God. You are a customized situation. You are going to speak to every single one of your children exactly the way they need to be spoken to. We are declaring that when people watch this show, 
they recognize the choice that they have. And Lord, we are declaring that they will choose you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who was the perfect sacrifice beyond any sacrifice we could ever make. And God, thank you for that. Thank you for the access. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, we give thanks and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Got to do this. I didn't want to do it. God said I had to do it. Um, we hope that y'all have been blessed by something that we've said, our testimonies. Um, and we want to extend an invitation for you to um, be saved as well and spend the life that we're spending with God on the good side. Um, so repeat after me. God. God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving me. For loving me. Thank you. Thank you. For sending your son for me. For sending your son for me. I believe you lived. I believe you lived. And you died. And you died. Just for me. Just for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You saved, Amen. okay? We out here. You out here. Yeah. Um, I'm not TC, so we don't have a number for you to dial. Listen, we ain't got no. But just know that y'all got community. <laughs> DM us, and we'll be community. Yeah. And help you on this journey, because <laughs> you need community on, on this journey, because it's a journey. It's a journey, <laughs> it's for a journey. sure. Yes. You're not going to be perfect, but that ain't the point. It's right. a journey. Yeah. Um, we love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for rocking with us. Thank y'all for gave your life to Christ. You are really a family member. And we're going to see you in heaven. Hey. And we're going to see you in heaven. Like, like literally see you in heaven. So, yeah. yeah. We love y'all. Enjoy your night or day or night. Bye from the God Boats. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We so appreciate your support and we'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you are listening and also visit us on social media. You can find us at Mark Z. Godbolt and Jade Godbolt on Instagram as well as The Godbolt Life on Instagram.